Hey everyone, today I have my friend Christian here with me and we are doing something that a lot of people have been asking about in regards to 545 ammo testing and that is using the Hornady Black VMAX. It's a 60 grain bullet designed for varmints, hence the VMAX. And so far, every single test we've done, people said, I want to see what the VMAX does. I want to see what the VMAX does. Today we're going to find out what the VMAX does. Do you think it's maximum varmints, like really big? Varmint maximum? I don't know. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's a very I mean, good name. It's a good name. Um, but what we're going to be doing is testing it for velocity, very, very briefly accuracy, just kind of roughly, and then most importantly, testing it through some ballistic gel. We're going to do hopefully two shots into ballistic gel to try to get some uh, repeatable pattern, see, you know, get a, a little bit bigger of a test sample. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the exact same gel blocks that we tested the other 5-4 rounds into, so we should be able to get as good of an apples-to-apples -apples comparison as possible. So, yes. with all that jibber jabber out of the way, let's go ahead and we'll do the velocity first and then we'll start shooting into some gel. Hopefully. All right, so here we have the two uh, shots into ballistic gel from that 545 five, VMAX. Um, pretty consistent results between both of them. So over here on the left-hand side or the top of your screen was my shot. I at first thought that it actually exited the block because the wound channel from the five, or seven and six we were testing actually obscured the projectile, but the projectile actually stopped like right at the 11, 11 and a half inch mark over here. We'll show you some close-up pictures of that as well as, you know, um, after we pull it out of the gel, um, but very consistent results starts opening up easily within that first inch to a pretty good wound cavity. Let's see what that width is. I'd say right around three, three and a half inches, three and a half inches for that permanent wound cavity, and it's a pretty good, almost uh, uniform shape all the way around. So it's not just flat or anything. So really impressive there. I think this is, would make an excellent varmint round, specifically for how quickly it actually opens up like that. Christian, what'd you think? I thought it was great. I mean, we had exact, almost exactly the same uh, results on the on both sides here. It started opening up right away. It fragmented everywhere. There are fragments all along the wound channel, all the way around, as you can see. It's really consistent with this one. The little red tip broke off right in the first inch, and then everything just shattered after that. Yeah. You got about, what, about 13, 13 and a half yeah. inches of penetration here, and what looks like pretty good retention of the lead core not so much the breath or the copper because that's all back here but the lead core seems to be really good intact and did spread out pretty well so i like it yeah i mean both both had again very similar wound channels so it seems to be a very consistent round so far granted if you're shooting it into a hog or anything else there's a lot more variables to go on here but just from the basic gel test pretty impressive and consistent results not in a, an immense amount of penetration, but really good, consistent expansion between the two. And again, once we pull it out, we'll test weight retention and all that, but uh, I'm I'm happy with that. It's a good round, obviously. Yeah, not as big of a permanent wound cavity as seven and six, but that's not necessarily what we're going for here. All right, so now we're gonna wrap up our thoughts about the Hornady VMAX. And now you weren't here for the other testing I've done with the 545. Not However, you were here for some 300 blackout testing. Yes as well as the seven and six we are also testing yes. today. So what was your opinion of the performance, terminal performance we got out of the Hornady VMAX? Um, what kind of hit me right away was how quickly the bullet started to fragment on impact. Yeah. I mean, it, it went in maybe a half an inch, 
and then it just blew apart and you see wreckage all the way through the wound channel yeah. i mean you, you you'll get fragmentation on around but this didn't fragment it disintegrated and just shot everywhere it's a lot like the 300 black that we were shooting beforehand that just yeah, shot little Armageddon razor blades and, yeah, yeah. Same basic concept, just little razor blades of copper all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's a really good wound channel, really good expansion, and pretty darn decent penetration as well. Yeah, and, and the base of the bullet still penetrated to about, I think the first shot was 11 and a half inches, the second shot was about 13, 13 14 inches. Yeah. So still decent penetration, not mm -hmm. the super good penetration for like larger animals, like, you know, if I'm trying to track down a bear, that might not be my first choice. I would not. However, if I'm going for you know, varmints or even like coyotes. V. Yeah, hence the V. Um, coyotes and maybe even deer. But again, because of that fragmentation, you might start affecting the quality of some of that meat in there. Yeah. Um, but again, for things that you're not necessarily trying to eat, you know, I think it works really they well. They say copper is good for arthritis. <laughs> Probably not So copper that's been cased around lead, lead never, specifically never hurt anybody um but i yeah again i really agree that first inch already mm -hmm. getting that full permanent wound cavity no matter how big the little furry thing is that you're shooting mm -hmm. um you're gonna get that good expansion mm -hmm. inside of that target and it was good expansion it didn't, it didn't just start to expand at that first inch it was huge expansion on that first inch yeah. you know it, it didn't have that kind of cone football look right. to it it was big expansion in the beginning and then it tapered off as it went out so all yeah. that energy is dumping right at the half inch mark and it's just whoa. yeah it's, it's dumping that energy quick and one interesting to, to thing too in comparison to the other rounds i've tested so far specifically the fmjs and the seven and six which is technically i guess an fmj um the fmjs are designed to tumble in five four five this just did a lot of expansion and had a very linear wound channel mm -hmm. um so it's probably a little bit easier to predict where that bolt's gonna go. Yeah. Now granted, shooting into other things that have bone that have bone or hide or anything like that, there's a lot more variables that can affect the path of your bullet. But Ink sacks. this one <laughs> this one was definitely a little bit more predictable in that respect. And that's something I know a lot of people might appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, so if you had an AK-74, which you should everyone should have an AK-74, but if you had an AK-74, would that be like a good home defense round in your thought, in your opinion? Yeah, I think so. I mean, given the amount of, the, given the amount of penetration that it had, um, you're not likely to go through somebody. Not likely. I'm not saying it won't, but you're not likely because we have bones and we have denser tissues and people wear clothes and things like that. And 13 and a half inches is not that much penetration. Yeah. Plus, what does go through is significantly smaller than what yeah. you start with yeah. because all that's shedding off and that made in that first couple of you know, first couple of inches that it goes through so yeah i would use it as a home defense round um that's loud inside and blow my eardrums out but hey yeah. all I rifles have, are going to do that i have ear pro thing. next to my bed so. exactly <laughs> um yeah and I, I would echo that now it, it might not be my first choice it might be good for a dedicated like home magazine but if i'm looking for something to stockpile for the zombie apocalypse probably won't be my first choice just because it's going to lack a lot of that barrier defeating ability that mm -hmm. you'd want to get from intermediate cartridges 545 isn't great at it but fmjs are going to be better than a vmax well but. the little plastic tip came off like right in that first yeah inch. it did and then everything just went to hell from there it just blew apart yeah and the, the piece that's left and i'm sure you'll see it the piece is left is very very small it's yeah. not a big piece yeah so I would love to see what that looks like on drywall. I'd like to yeah. see what that looks like through like a hollow core door. Yeah. Those kinds Ooh. of things. You know, yeah. your basic, your basic in-home concealment. You know, cover concealment, all the other. I would want to see if what it would look like through that, or a front door. You know, a solid yeah. core front door. What, what's it going to do there? So that'd be a good test to do. Yeah. So yeah. Well, and so in addition to this, just like the other five four five videos we've done so far. Um, what I'm going to do is have a much more detailed write-up on AK files where I talk about weight retention, show pictures of the bullets and all that that we're able to pull out of the gel, which thankfully this is the first time I've gotten both projectiles to be able to draw from the gel. Um, so, you know, good news there. So we'll have some interesting data to talk about. I'll have a link to that AK files thread uh, in the description of wherever you're watching this. Um, so definitely check it out over there if you want to know a little bit more of that nitty-gritty, hardcore science-y data stuff maths uh, at least as best as we can do um Numbers. so i want to oh what yeah, yeah, other, yeah. 
comments? I don't have any other comments. Okay. You just started talking about <laughs> math and sciences, and my brain went like... Yeah, sh shut down. You're done. Um, I want to thank my patrons for making a video like this possible. It is not cheap or you know, time efficient to throw those gel blocks together. Um, so they're the ones that make stuff like that possible. And also having to buy this ammo. Again, the contributions from patrons are directly what fund that. Um, and I want to say that I post all my content there early. I do some exclusive content over there. We do live streams, giveaways, all that fun stuff. So if any of that, if any of that interests you or you just want to be financially supportive of the channel, definitely uh, check out my Patreon. But anyway, with all that said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video, and I really appreciate you watching. The muzzle loaders sound kind of like elephant farts. Never heard an elephant fart. I imagine it sounds a lot like that. I have to go to Africa now and find out. Or India. Or, or India. Thailand. Any of those places. Thailand. Chicago. why the people who do Star Wars insist on putting campy little stupid yeah. in there. Uh, like, for example, Jar Jar Binks, okay. like the little nursemaids on Luke Skywalker's island. So that, I specifically referring to that, I literally thought that, that those were a hallucination because I was like, there's no sign of them being on that island. There's apparently a, quite a few of them. There's no sign of them on the island at the end of 7. Mm -hmm. And then there's no sign of them at the beginning of 8. And then just all of a sudden they're there after she wakes up. And it's like, oh, they're, she's hallucinating them. Hmm. And I was like, oh, wait, that's supposed to be a thing, I guess? I guess. Uh, 545 VMAX. Yeah. But I can understand wanting to make Luke kind of parody Yoda which is what I took from that can you though well he was off on a on a deserted planet all by his little self you know hiding from everything bitter at how things turned out Yoda had you know his people fucking go crazy and do shit. and so did Luke but they made him instead of making him a bitter old wise man uh -huh. they made him a crazy, grumpy, nursing home asshole. The kind of one that f***s on himself and grabs the nurse's butts, the fatter they are. Yeah, but I mean, part of what made Luke Skywalker endearing was his endless optimism. Yeah. Even in the face... Destroyed. Even though his father was literally evil incarnate, mm. he still said, I still sense there is good in you and I'm going to try to save you. Mm -hmm. And yet, now he's like... I had a guy turn on me, and now I'm just going to sit and pout. I'm not going to try to fix it. Well, the guy didn't even actually turn on him. Well, right. And again, that, that was one of the things where it's like... You, the, you got all weirded out and f***ed up. Well, right. Exactly. Which, again, I just thought was such a weird plot device. It was weird. I didn't enjoy it. All right. Hornady, SS, or VMAX. I keep saying SSTs. This also lets get a zero.